Hello, everybody. Welcome to another video of Reynaldo Chess Lesson. Uh, today, we are going to comment the game played between Anish Giri and Jordan Van Forest in the Armageddon tiebreak uh, of the Tata Steel tournament. Uh, for this game, uh, Anish Giri have uh, white pieces. Remember, in this uh, format, the, the owner of the white pieces have five minutes and four minutes for black in case of a draw. Uh, black wins the match. So, Let's start with this. Uh, for the opening, why decide to select the London system? That is a really quite practical decision when you are playing a Blix game and you have and you want to uh, to do some fast move without being too much in the opening phase. So, knight f6, e3, and here c5. With this move, Black is trying to put some quickly pressure on b2, especially in some case when White continued with c3, looking for the defense with queen b3. But Anish did knight f3. Without care about queen b6 because after the knight c3 continuation, the pawn may be poisoned. So Jor Jordan decides to continue in a classical style, knight bg2, and now e6. Uh, develop the bishop out of the pawn chain may be an alternative, but black have to be careful with possible characters and maybe, you know, possible greedy continuations, just keeping the material advantage. So, E6 is quite practical, just protecting the pawn and now pyramidal formation for white. So bishop d6, bishop g3, typical retreat, keeping the tension, hoping to recapture with the pawn to open the file for the, for the rook. This is useful because the bishop can come here and create an intersection point. In the case when, when the bishop is out of the pawn chain, really, that retreat really is not too good. So a6. About this move, really, this is a typical move that probably is just to create some confusion because it's not a move that is helping black to achieve anything at the moment. Usually this move may be useful if the bishop is out of the pawn chain to be able to regroup, preventing some not h4 ideas. But okay, the position is uh, so balanced and close that, that really don't care too much if, if somebody loses a, a tempo in this way. So bishop b5, okay, trying to create a structural damage followed by queen a4, hitting the pawn and queen a3 to put pressure on d6 because maybe a potential intersection point. So for that reason, uh, Jordan did uh, this bishop d7 move in order to remove the bishop from d6. In order to explain this a little bit better, let's see a sample variant, for example. Short castle, takes, takes, queen a4, attacking the pawn on c6, and after something like uh, bishop, well, let's do, I don't, I don't know, black have to protect this pawn. Let's do a move like bishop b7. Okay, very passive, but logical to connect the rooks. So there is some move like queen a3 that can be annoying because there is intersection point on d6. So in order to prevent those kind of ideas, Jordan anticipate this, just, sorry, moving the bishop back. So 95, increasing the pressure on the pin. Queen b6 and a4, creating these outputs for the bishop. Also, the, the, the point of this advance is that in case of some a6 idea, well, why can character with check and maybe push the pawn to a5, winning a tempo over the queen? So, blood castle, castle, and finally a6. After this, bishop takes, pawn takes, and here d takes on, uh, d takes on c5. Uh, with the character, uh, White is trying to deflect the queen because if the queen captures on b2, the pawn on c6 will be hanging. Uh, for that reason, Jordan decides to continue capturing the pawn with the with the bishop. Let me see because I think that queen on the queen on b2 may be in trouble. Yeah, probably that that should be the continuation. Let me verify this. What about this? Okay, knight takes e6, bishop takes e5. Is the is the engine suggestion at the moment. And later some knight b3 stuff and the queen is going to be uh, in a risky location. Okay, so after pawn takes, yeah, a black recapture here with the bishop. The idea of the capture, okay, was invite a black to capture the poison pawn. Really the queen cannot be tracked at the moment, are just some midterm variants. But here black have to decide basically captured with the queen or with the bishop. Jordan took with the bishop that, that as a rule, say with the less valuable pieces used to be the best, but 
that textual continuation allows expansion. Um, Giri managed to fix the flan. So the character with the queen will be an exception, but will be better because in that case before it's not possible because the pawn on c3 may be hanging in that case. But well, after this continuation, Giri continued with the expansion, fixing the queen. So queen b7 and now uh, knight d3. Here, why is trying to keep this square under control? Because black have the bishop pair and would like to open the position with central pawn breaks. But with those maneuvers, why can kick the blocking in this square and also keeping the character of the position more blocked than, than open? So, knight e7, reinforcing possible c5 advance, and here knight b3 to prevent the, the pawn break. So, queen b5, knight b4, queen back to the b7 square, and here rook b1. So, with this move, looks like the rook is again in another close file, but really the, the idea of the move is be able to take the upwards on c5 and after the trade of the knight and the character with the b pawn on c5, the b5 will be finally open. And uh, in that way, some a new outputs on b6 may be used by the, in this case, by the rook. So here, uh, black did knight of six. And after knight of six, uh, knight c5, he decides to take the outputs to continue with the plan design before. So bishop takes, Pound takes, and here queen d7. So we, we okay, the, the position have a uh, opposite colors uh, bishop situation, but it's not, not possible for Vlad connect the rooks or do the liberating move to open the diagonal. Maybe in some case, you know, Vlad can consider even, you know, just sacrifice a pound to, to create some space for, for, for the pieces. But despite why pound structure looks horrible, why I have an amazing control and this vision that is in the same color of all the structure is out of the pound chain and it's still quite active. But in comparison with the other one that is completely blocked by his own pound structure. So rook b6, taking the outputs and creating intersection point on c6. And here knight e4, attacking the, chasing the vision and attacking on c5. So trying to create some control play. So attacking on c3 as well. Uh, Giri decides to capture on c6 with the rook to protect c5. Knight takes c3, logical continuation, uh, counterattack, queen c2, and here knight b5. Uh, in this position, uh, Giri decides to play rook b6, which is a pass pawn. He don't care about trade of pieces because eventually this pawn, the, the pass pawn, may be supported uh, with the bishop from behind. So now knight a3. Um, in this moment of the game, you know, Giri started to think during a long time to calculate concrete variance with C, with, uh, with C6. There is a rule that says pass pound must be pushed, but I believe that in case of that, really, Black is ready to capture, capture, and there is a lot of counterplay in the variant. So in this position, maybe it will be a bit better just follow a positional pattern, removing the queen keeping the queen to square away of the knight and preserving the options to push the pawn in maybe in better conditions because black will not have the same quarter for sure. So he did this, Jordan, uh, Jordan uh, took the, uh, the queen, pawn takes, knight takes, and here, uh, why have to be very careful because, for example, yeah, in case of the capture here, there is some 92 checks, intermediate move, it's not so simple. So he took here, and after bishop takes, the the position is just, you know, uh, opposite color bishop situation with a pawn of disadvantage for Giri, who is in a most win situation. So what we can say about this, the actual situation, is that white will be very happy with a draw, but in case of a draw, black wins. So Giri is forced to keep playing until the last consequence, trying to, you know, to... to, to to kick the, some kind of complexity in the position. And really, he was fighting very well. So rook c1, bishop b5, but black have a complete fortress strategy, so there is no way to penetrate black's territories. Bishop d6, rook to the open file. Yeah, uh, bishop c5. Now black prepare double rooks and start to offer the trade of rooks. So here, why is trying to create some chaos on the keys and maybe reaching some rook to points? Uh, but okay, here h, h5 is a move that looks for the control of the g4 square to prevent some future expansions. 
Also important to mention that, you know, as these outputs cannot be challenged, Vlad may consider the positional exchange sacrifice, you know, trading a rook for a bishop and a pawn that will be good, probably in order to play to win uh, for black. But as black don't need to win, black is good enough, you know, with a draw for black. So no rig to, to react with the positional exchange sacrifice. H, H5, in F2, in A7, H3, to push the pawn to, uh, to G4, for example, here fix the flam, maybe a good idea. But okay, he did King G6, G4, pawn takes, pawn take, C6 opening trade of pieces, he refused that, uh, Jordan offered the trade again, he didn't refuse the trade, Rook C8, just tra the, the trade of pieces is inevitable because otherwise he can, they can repeat the position three consecutive times. So finally, the trade happens. Rook e5 taking the outputs, creating intersection point on f5 to keep uh, putting some kind of pressure on the position. Uh, so bishop d7, for example, here rook d7 looks good to protect the pawn after f5 be able to capture. Okay, but he did bishop d7. Uh, rook d5 chat, king a7, bishop a, intersection point on g7, so g6. No way to penetrate, really. Rook e5, f6. Okay, move to that square. Makes some sense to recover some control here. Now centralization of the king. Bishop b5, they, both players take the, the respectively output with the bishop. Okay, here, but yeah, bishop b5 is very weak, really, because the pawn on e6 is hanging. Maybe something like king f7 to protect the pawn and later be able to move the bishop. But okay, I suppose that, you know, in, in this moment of the game, Without increment and in move 48, uh, probably Giri start to be, you know, very short on time, and Jordan noticed that, and he start to play, you know, some super fast move in order to increase the the pressure on the clock. But really, the be you know, this is something difficult to 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 learn and to be conscious about. That the best way to to put pressure on the clock on is spotting a strong move and difficult continuation. The, the velocity shouldn't be in your hands, really. It should be in your brain. So, but okay, imagine the, the nerd uh, at this moment of the game. So bishop b5, the pawn is hanging, king f7, rook e1, rook e7. Maybe, maybe looking now uh, at the solution, maybe the sacrifice of the pawn could be intentionally to open the file and offer the trade of rooks and just agree the draw, but it's clearly, you know, why we we'll, why cannot accept the trade of the rook? Black took the outputs, king f3, we shot e2 check, king g3, rook e3 check, king f2, rook e4. So the rook have been moved back and forth. So now, okay, the, the king, uh, Giri cannot repeat the position because it will be a draw. So he did rook c7 check, king e8, and now g5. Uh, and in this moment, uh, Jordan make a big blunder, probably under time pressure as well. He he just captured the pound, leaving the bishop. The normal continuation will be probably, yeah, maybe just pound takes, uh, pound takes, and there is no way to make progress for white. But he took the pound, leaving the bishop hanging, and now this position is absolutely winning for Giri. Uh, the game continue, went for this, attacking the isolated pound and ready to promote. But after, after he made the move, uh, Jordan noticed that he, he ran out of time, um, uh, losing the, the game by time now. Um, Jordan was the, the new winner of the new edition of the Tata Steel Tournament in a very chaotic game. Who was, uh, you know, uh, the rules of the game were dictated mostly by the time pressure and those Armageddon situations. A lot of people, you know, open deep controversies if this will be the, the tie rate for those kind of important tournaments. But before the Armageddon, they play, you know, a couple of blitz games with increment where and, and those two, two games ends in a draw. So, you know, this is really a drastic uh, decision to force the tie rate because otherwise they may be just, you know, uh, making a lot of draw without, without finish. So the Armageddon is my opinion is a interesting way to, to force a decisive result. But okay, having 
<laughs> Giri playing uh, those kind of tiebreaks, okay, it's, it's, it's not a surprise. A lot of droughts as well. So, well, this was the analysis of this exciting Armageddon. I hope you enjoy the, the comments and the content. Don't forget, if you enjoy the video, like and subscribe and don't forget the channel. So thank you very much and hope to see you in a new video. Bye.